King County Council Chair Claudia Balducci takes her strong yet fair leadership qualities into another year as chair of the King County Council. She was first elected chair by her colleagues in 2020. <laughs> Claudia was elected to the Bellevue City Council and in 2014 became mayor of Bellevue before being elected to the King County Council two years later. Claudia initiated and co-chaired the Regional Affordable Housing Task Force and continues to seek transportation solutions for all East Siders by extending light rail from Seattle to Bellevue, Redmond, and beyond. Those and many more issues are on the table in 2022. Hi, I'm Tony Vanchala. This is King County Conversations, and we are speaking with the chair of the King County Council, Claudia Balducci. Uh, Claudia, chair. Yeah. It's been a, a few years since we had a conversation. It has. I believe you were mayor of Bellevue back then. I would have been a council member. It was before I was mayor, but oh, yeah, it's okay. been a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so much has happened and so much is happening now, which is really my first question. Yeah. Your agenda is very bold, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. Where do you start? I guess that's my first question. Yeah, I think one of the big challenges we have today is we have to work in different time frames. We have to work on the long range stuff because we got big long term problems that need long term solutions like housing. Housing's been falling behind the number of people around here for a long time, which creates prices that people can't afford. But also there are people who are going to have to struggle to pay their rent right now. So we have to do both. We have yeah. to plan for the future. And we also have to really focus on what we can do to help people in this really historic moment where we're still struggling through a pandemic and the economic fallout. So yeah, it's a big job. And let's go back just for a second to the pandemic. The last couple of years as chair, yeah. You're dealing with things you never thought you would have to deal with before. Oh, absolutely. Before I became chair, our big debate was how many meetings each year would we allow members to phone call into? And we landed on five. <laughs> and then all of a sudden in early 2020, just after I became chair, we had to switch to video calls for everything. Yeah. The team was amazing. They were really, uh, they, they problem solved. And I have to say there's been one really great thing that came out of it. Public comment, I was worried at first that people would call in just because it was easy and they would, you know, sort of make a joke out of it. We have had more people contact us with more serious uh, testimony for the council, issues they want us to work on. It's been amazing in how it's opened up access to our meetings. They don't have to come down to the courthouse. Yeah. They can just zoom in. And I think we should always keep that. And we're working towards always keeping that availability for the public. Well, I would think, yeah, I would think one goal, especially in this kind of, I want to say, divided political time that we're in here yeah. the last 10, 12, 20 years or <laughs> whatever, you want people more engaged. Exactly. And if they can become engaged with 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 brilliant questions, some of them have good questions yeah. and research them first. That's way better for everybody, I would think. I, I agree. That dialogue is so important. We need to hear from our constituents, all of them, all the different points of view. And they need to hear from us, too, because that's how we really start to work together towards a vision that most people can get behind. So the issues, there's so many of them from 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 improving transit to the homeless issue, to the housing issue. Mm -hmm. And I've asked this question before. How connected are these? Well, they're all connected, right? So early in my career, I worked on transportation. That was like my big thing. I fought for light rail to the east side where my district is. And by the way, it's about to open next year. It's so exciting. Uh, I hope to see you there. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> but yes, when you so. think about it, the reason we need so much transportation is because people can't afford to live near where they go to school or where they work. So housing costs affect transportation and all of it affects climate and the environment because the more people sprawl out in order to afford to live someplace the more traffic the more trees get cut down the more so it's all connected the more people can't support themselves because their life becomes too expensive sure. so yeah if we could fix our planning and our land use and allow people more of an opportunity to live where they want to then I think we will start to make things better in a lot of different ways. We want to start a beneficial cycle around all of these issues. Makes sense. And then, of course, the environment comes in, and that's obviously that's connected yeah. to, to transit and, and all of that, people getting out of their vehicles. Um, so the other one is crime. People talk about crime mm. all the time, and you know, the, the number of shootings across the country, New York City, other major cities, even Seattle, Tacoma. Those numbers are up, mm -hmm. uh, and there's two ways to look at that. You have you have some people coming from one side that are going with more law enforcement, pe keep people in prison longer. Others that are going no, there's there's some base issues here that cause right. crime. Let's fix it that way. Do you have to look at both. You do, and, and so we're having a terrible gun violence problem, and we've had an uptick in crime during the pandemic years, but we have to come at it with all all approaches. So. 
here at King County, we're going to hire a sheriff for the first time as an appointed sheriff in many years uh, in response to the voters approving a charter change. And we have a public safety advisory committee, community members and stakeholders who are talking to us about ways they want to see policing modernized and reformed. So law enforcement working hand in hand with community uh, ad advocates and voices and people who are in the human services sector like to come at the problem from all ends. So people aren't desperate yeah. and they're not turning to drugs, they're not turning to crime, but also people feel safe. Everyone wants to feel safe sure. in their communities and so we have to really look at that. That is an important job for us. Well, it does start with that, yeah. yeah uh, that's true. You think of your home, your family, your, your extended family and yeah. it does start with, it does start with safety. Um, nine members on the King County Council, yeah. all bright, all with different opinions. Oh, there we go. How do you bring these folks together and, and, and move forward on the issues that you all probably agree with the result, yeah. but getting there is the thing that maybe might bring some disagreements. I have to say, when people think about different governments, if they think about the federal government and Congress maybe, or they think about uh, maybe some uh, local city governments that might be having some differences, we get along pretty well here. <laughs> I've been really, really pleased and impressed with my colleagues. Yes, we have differences of opinion, and sometimes we have split votes, but we have a dispute me resolution mechanism built in. We're a legislature. You put a proposal on the table, you debate it openly and honestly, and then you vote. And uh, if we listen to each other, hear different interests, because we all represent different parts of the county, sure. um, I think we get to really good places. And most of our big votes are unanimous or close to it because we listen to each other and we work well together. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of this council. Well, great, and, yeah. and, and you should be. Um, so we, we talked before about, about people being engaged uh, in the meetings, whether it's virtually or in, in the old days in person. What are maybe the two top two or three questions that come in, concerns mm. from the public? Is it, are we going back to safety again? Are we going yeah. back to transit? All the things you're working on? I have to say the, the things I hear about the most these days are uh, homelessness. People yeah. are very concerned with homelessness. They want to see an end to this public suffering that people are going through and they want to have a community that feels like it's caring and safe for everyone. So that is a big, big issue for constituents right now. Um, but then there's just like a lot of interesting things that, you know, a community will rally around an issue that you might not think about. Like right now there's a big group of constituents in my district that are trying very hard to get us to support through our parks and recreation function uh, a cricket pitch. Yeah. Uh, that is a very popular sport. It's really popular with so many of the people who have come to live here. And we're hoping to, you know, do things that will also make life fun and enjoyable, not just always dealing with heavy issues. We have to do that. But it's also we can make life so much uh, more interesting, engaging, and fun for people. I love those kinds of projects. A cricket pitch. A cricket I love, pitch. <laughs> I love the idea. Obviously, a lot of international uh, folks coming from all over the world here. Yeah. Cricket would work, as soccer has worked. A uh, quick question before we go, and I want to give you what I call my turn the tables, where you get to ask me one question, oh, put no. me on the spot, just uh, make it easy. Uh, and that is paddle ball. Now, is paddle ball going to be the state? And then that's not your level, but is oh. that going to be the state? Sport? Not if I have anything to say. I about think there's it. a cricket debate. should be this, <laughs> the, the state <laughs> sport. I'm gonna I'm gonna wave the flag for District Six and say cricket should be the uh, the state sport. Oh my, oh my, <laughs> what a debate that'll be. Okay, uh, King County Chair Claudia Balducci, yes. your turn to ask me a ah. question. I'll do my best. Okay, so I think that the, our people watching this might wonder uh, why is Tony Ventrella doing a conversation series about local government, and so. What, what does local government mean to you? And tell me a little bit about your passion for local well, government. Well, I spent so much time in, uh, in the sports business as a, as a writer uh, and uh, radio and television. And prior to that, had a barber shop in Connecticut and worked for, in my dad's barber shop. Huh. And the topics that people would discuss, sports was not number one. Local issues, local politics. So I heard that my whole huh. teenage years. And my dad would be very engaged. And well, how can we fix this pothole? Or what's happening up at the corner? There's too much traffic, we need a cross. So those issues to me were always, believe it or not, more important than sports issues. Mm -hmm. And I thought since my sports career has pretty much mostly come to an end, I wanna do something, I wanna be involved and I want to do my part to bring more clarity to what happens behind the scenes yes. in the King County Council and at different levels of government. So that's, that's why uh, that's why I'm involved with King County Conversations and uh, Chair Claudia Balducci, thank you so much for thank being you. with me today. Great, great to talk to, to you. Good to see you. <laughs>